Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, we will work on the collection page and we will add the feature of sorting. Filtering will be next, so let's check out how we can add sorting using Ajax request on the collection page. So let's start. Currently, this is our theme and it does not have any sorting on the collection page, but we do have the option in the collection setting. So if I scroll down, we have secondary image, show vendor, show rating header, and here is the enable sorting. If someone enable the sorting, it should display the sort function at the top of our collection page. Let's come back where we want to display it. So here is the collection grid that is displaying all the product. Just above this, I want to display the filter as well as the sorting. So let's come here and display this, um, let's say collection. I put it just a class name. I'm not going to design it in here using, we will use, of course, uh, I'll use Telvin CSS, but this is just an indication of, okay, this is the collection sort in here. Now inside this, we will add our sorting. How do we add the sorts? Um, let's come back to the Shopify documentation on the collection page. So in the templating theme architecture, if I scroll down, they have the structure of the DOM because our theme was the same as DOM. So we removed a lot of things. If you want to sort collection, it will be sort by URL parameter. So if you say sort by price descending or ascending, it will just filter it for us. And they also have this code that you can use. This is the code and this is the JavaScript. Let's copy this code quickly and see how we can use this code. I'll paste it in here. This is not a lot. It's just a few lines. Let's come back to our collection page. Refresh it. Okay, it will display alphabetically in here. Okay, it is great that it's displaying, but let's see if this works. If I say best selling, it refresh my page and it send me to the best selling sorting. Okay, great, that is working. Feature will be manual. Yes, it is working. And everything is working great. The only thing is like, it should be Ajax request. We don't want to like refresh the page. That is what we want to add. So let's come to the code. I'm going to completely remove this JavaScript because this JavaScript is what happens. Look, if I show you behind the scene, this is document.query sort by, which get the sort by ID. And it is adding an event listener on change, get take the value, then window.search, it is going to give you a new location. That will refresh the page and add the parameter to that. So let's remove this JavaScript since we are using Alpine. We have to design it with Alpine JS. We do need this ID, but if you leave it, that's still fine. Let's initialize our Alpine component. Again, X data. And let's put this as an object in here. So the first thing we have to do, let's design it a little bit. Uh, let's add this page width. You know, one of the thing is like it is over the cross of this. It should be the same space as this one. So we can use this page width class. And um, yeah, that's it. Let's see, and let's display it on the right side. So I'll make it flex, justify, end. And also let's design this sort option a little bit. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add some padding Y of three, padding X of four, and margin from top to bottom also. Some three margin top to bottom. Now let's come here and let's refresh it. It will display it nicely in here. We can select it. Let's give it some border also. If I say border and border black, it should give it a border black. So it will be highlighted like a button. Currently it is like a text. So if I refresh now, it will show like a button. It looks fine. It requires some other like minor design, but that's fine. It is displaying properly. But currently if I change everything, like anything, it doesn't work because we removed the JavaScript. Let's fix the JavaScript using Alpine JS. Now, how do we do it? First of all, um, let's add a sort that display the default value in here. Let's check. This is sort that take the default value. On a refresh, it is going to check if collection has this sort and it will assign it to this sort value. What if I move this at the top in here so I have access to this sort value? In the Alpine component, let's write uh, one of these properties in here give it a name of sort, not short, sort is equal to sort, which comes from this one. So if someone refresh the page, it will take the default sort and it will assign it here. 
that should be fine if it is manual base selling it will assign it here now let's create a function and the function will be called when someone change our select so how does it work let's come here and we say at change at changes uh, use for the select if anything change on the selected option we can call a function let's say um let's let's just name it like uh sort again short we can say sort collection we just call this function of sort collection if this select changed now let's write our function at the top and see how we can send an ajax request and get the data and display it uh, the reason I do step by step is because I want to show you some of the issues you also learn the JavaScript thing uh, how you can manipulate DOM which is the important part that's why let's do this step by step so this function will be called okay great if this one changed now let's change let's send a request to the sort and add it in the URL so we can just use the fetch in here it automatically add this for me which is great right this is exactly what we want but not truly really. so currently we are sending this uh, URL in the collection page and then sort by everything looks great let's auto complete and I'm going to remove some of the things first of all it is sending it to the collection handle which is great it is sort by everything works and then it emit this uh, emit we don't have emit in alpine js we have dispatch instead of dispatch we will have this data what is this data this data should be a text not a json when we send a fetch request to this url it return the whole document for me like the whole html document so let's check it, change it to a text so it should be a text and then we have a data as a text now for now let's console.log uh, the data okay cool oops we have this extra parameters in here and if we have any error display the error now let's see what the data will contain we are sending an ajax request if this function is called let's come to the code let's refresh it in the console log let's remove that and let's change it to feature it send the request it return the whole document for me now I have the document all I have to do is find out the product and when you find the product replace it with this one and it should be that much smooth so how do we find it you can see like this one has an ID of product grid container so we can say document dot query selector and grab only this one when you grab it just replace the content of it this data will be this data right so let's search inside this since this is a text we cannot use document.query on a text so let me show you what I mean let's learn something new also let's say this is the data and if it is the document you might say okay data.query selector and let's pass this ID let's say that inner this does not work the reason I put it this way is because I want to show you how you can like uh, fix this issue if you said data dot container since this is a text it is not a DOM you cannot use this query selector and it will throw an error for you so if we assign this um, to a variable of let HTML DOM and let's put a uh, HTML DOM in here. Let's see how does it output something. I will refresh it. We don't have any problem so far. Okay, let's do a feature. Now it is saying like query selector is not a function. That's correct because this data is a text. It is not a DOM. How do we change it to a DOM? It is like you have to create a virtual div element put the data of this inside that and that div element will become a document so you can query through that if I say HTML div it is just a variable I'm defining and I'm going to say create element div now I can say 
HTML div is equal to data. HTML div now will be a DOM. It is searchable. We can use document.query in that. So we can put this inside that. I hope I, I, I hope this makes sense. Of we are creating a div element, we insert the data inside that, so it becomes searchable using the query selector, and then we are going to assign it to this DOM. Let DOM. I don't have to specify it, but yeah. Now we are getting the information and put it in the DOM. Once we have it, we will output it. Now let's save it and see how does it work. Refreshing the page. Let's go by best selling. And yes, it is returning our data. And all of these are SVG placeholders that you can see. There's a lot more of them. I don't want to scroll down. It is having exactly the data that we want. If I scroll down, it will have this collection uh, with page and width. That is what we want. Now all we have to do is instead of consoling the log, let's replace that. We say just document this time. We go through this document and we say query selector, which one? This one. And we are going to add, oops, where is my autocomplete? And another HTML should be equal to DOM HTML, which is this, only the collection data. Now let's ref save this and let's refresh this page. Current is price descending and this is how it will display. Let's go with the feature and it didn't do anything. Let's go with the best selling. It didn't do anything. Let's go with alphabet and it doesn't work, right? So let's see what is the problem. If we come to the Alpine, this is the component and this is the price descending. But if I change this, you can see nothing happened. The reason is, okay, here is the reason. When we change this, it only send that to the sort collection. We never said, okay, change this one also. Like this one is calling the function, but it is always fixed. So we have to check this one. We have to update that. How do we update that? We can use the X model in here and we, we can say sort. So this select will be in sync with this. As soon as we change this, this value will also change. That is, I think, the solution. We add this. Let's come here and refresh the page. Now let's check out feature. Oh, I didn't, I think we didn't have, like we don't have the update yet. Okay, let's refresh the page again. Let's go to the best selling. It changed, if you notice that. Let's go from price low to high. It did change that. And let's go from low to high to low. And it is changing. New to old, old to new. And it is working properly. It is working as expected. The only thing we have to add is, first of all, update the URL. And once you update the URL, let's add a loading option also in here. So let's come back to our code. The, uh, the first thing I want to do is, uh, change the URL. So at the bottom, let's try a, a simple uh, comment. So let's see if Copilot can complete this one. Um, update URL without refreshing the page. Page width now, the page. Let's see if it, it can do that. Okay, yeah, this is how it is changing the history. So it is adding the sort at the URL using the replace state. And there is one more thing that we can do using, yeah, history that replace state should do the trick, but let's see how does this one work. But the comment that you write in here is <laughs> very important if you are using Copilot or not, but this is how it understand what it should do. Using history that replace state, it will replace the sorting at the, at the top at the URL here. Now let's come here, best selling, it is adding it to the URL. Okay, great. Let's do manual. It is updating. And let's do high to low. It is updating as well as the product. And that is how easy it is. What else we need to add? Let's add the loading. The loading was, I think we added the loading on the cart page on the mini on the cart drawer. So I extract that into this snippet. And this is just a loader. You can see it will show if the loading is true. How easy it is, like we just extract this in, in a separate like snippet. Easy to use. Just above this, 
I am going to include this loader. Let's not use include. Let's use render. My editor does not auto complete render. That's why I first write the include. Now, uh, in here at the top, let's do a uh, loading. Let's put it as a true for now and see how it will display. If it is true, how do it, it will display the loading for us? If I refresh, this is how the loading will display. I think it is fine and it is very consistent across like uh, all the loading in the website. Now let's make it false by default and it will become true if someone call this function. We say this the loading is true and when do we make it false? When this function will be called or when the error happen? Now we don't put it inside this because if the error happen it does not make it false. So we can use this finally. Finally will run even if it threw an error. At the end it will run this finally if you have ever used this fetch. Now at the end we are going to make the loading false. If I save it, let's come back to our document, let's refresh it. Everything looks great. Now let's change it to the best selling. It shows the loading and it update the product. And let's do A to Z, a Z to A, and high to low and everything is working perfect. Now this is an Ajax uh, sorting on Shopify team. I hope this video has been informative. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.